Welcome to episode 79 of the All the Books Show, the official podcast of the David A. Howe Public Library. Your stop for book news, literary news, and author news. Hey, is that the heater? Yeah, it is. It's going to keep us nice and toasty warm yeah. here. All right. Well, that's the heater. On this unusually warm February day. Yeah. Are you, are you enjoying the heat wave, by the way? Yeah. Good. Of course I am. I know you love the heat. I love it. You love it. the sun. I love it so much. Yeah. The person saying they love the heat so much is Eric Mickles. The person inquiring about whether or not he <laughs> loves the heat so much is Nick Gunning. Yeah, there we go. So we're glad to be so, back with yeah. you. Man, this is Do you a, think we should start saying yeah. our titles? If you like, if you like head to. of youth services, I said mine once, and yeah. you were like, "Ooh!" So <laughs> yeah, well, I just walked away from it. Right. I don't need that kind of hassle okay. in my life. Well. It's uh, it's nice to be just the two of us again, right? We've had guests the last couple yeah. of weeks. We had my brother Steve. I mean, yeah. uh, fans demand my brother Steve. There's nothing we can do about it. Yeah. So we got We got to keep bringing it back. Sure. And then your wife last week. Yeah, I thought she did a good job. Thanks. It was fun talking Nicholas Sparks with a pro. So you mean pro is and somebody who liked Nicholas Sparks, not pro on, on a mic. I, no, I mean like a professional Nicholas Sparks okay. fan. It's like yeah. it's her job. Yeah, to be her job's actually a music teacher, but yeah, but also secondary Nicholas. Sparks. Enough about her though. Yeah, sure. She's not here. It's yeah, just the two of us. Not her anymore. Uh, well, uh, before we dig into our topic today, which is, do you want to introduce our topic? We should keep it secret. Oh, keep it secret. So that, uh, okay. All right. So that well, people don't turn off the podcast. Be, oh boy. All right. Before we dig into that though, uh, February is Black History Month. So we've got some great displays uh, in the library, a collection of, uh, books, movies, CDs, uh, history, fiction, nonfiction, uh, stuff in the kids room, stuff in the adult section. So we encourage you to check some of those out. Uh, some really great stuff out there. So, so before we dig out, I wanted to mention, uh, NBCnews.com. Com, I put together a list of 14 books to read this Black History Month. So I'm looking through here, and a lot of these are uh, either authors we have or books that we have uh, right here in the collection. And as always, we can get them from uh, other libraries. So up first, God Help the Child by Toni Morrison. God help the child. Oh, wow. You know a real song. Okay. I, no, I don't. Is that a, I made that up. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah. All You're right. welcome. I did believe you. Yeah. Um, have you read Toni Morrison? No. I read Song of Solomon and did not get it. I didn't really. I mean, I've read the one in the Bible, but also the the <laughs> novel by Toni Morrison. Yeah. Uh, Nobel Look at laureate. This scholar over here. <laughs> Toni Morrison does her literary magic with God Help the Child, an emotional story of a woman called Bride and the way childhood trauma shaped her life and her loves. Mm. Uh, next on the list, Jam on the Vine by LaShonda Catrice Barnett. LaShonda Catrice Barnett's debut novel brings us Laveau Williams, the child of emancipated slaves who wants to be a journalist. Gender roles of the day keep her from realizing her dream until she takes matters into her own hands. Mm -hmm. It's Jam on the Vine. The Lost Treasure of R&B by Nelson George. Novelist, filmmaker, and music historian Nelson George is out with a third in his D. Hunter mystery series. Hunter is back in Brooklyn solving a mystery that has a backdrop firmly on the R&B scene. That sounds fun. I always like when they like take a certain era or genre and um, use it to. I mean, obviously, there's going to be a big mystery in this one, but to really like flesh out that era of music too. I like yeah. those. Um, Disgruntled by Asali Solomon. This engaging coming of age story centered on Kenya, whom we meet at age eight, guides us through what it's like to be black and different with parents who are black nationalists in the late '80s. This book is both funny and poignant. Okay. According to NBC News. Okay. Uh, nonfiction, Whoa. The Presidency in Black and White by April Ryan. Journalist April Ryan gives an insightful look at race relations in America from her view covering White House beat since 1997. Mm. Uh, Place Not Race by Cheryl Cashin. That's, only, that's 20 years. Yeah. Holy crap, 97 was 20 years ago? I know, right? Titanic, <laughs> Law 20 years old. Law professor and civil rights activist Cheryl Cashin flips the conversation on affirmative action in higher education by looking at it from the lens of a place beyond race. It promises some interesting discourse about the role of race and place in academia. I was like, wow. uh, Eye of the Struggle by James McGrath. It's the... I on the yeah <laughs> there you go. I on the struggle is a compelling biography of journalist Ethel Payne, the first lady of the black press, a significant figure in the civil rights era. Tales of an Awkward Black Girl by Issa Rae. Cyber sensation Issa Rae stars on the rise. She tells her story in a collection of laugh out loud essays on what it's like to be socially awkward and introverted. Quick question: yes. Have you ever laughed out loud while reading? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, that just doesn't happen a lot in my life. I think more Not when tons. I was a teenager. Yeah, when I, I mean. When I was a teenager reading the first couple of Deadpool comics I had, that was a lot of laughing out loud. I think, you know, often I'll, uh, I think if it was like I was hearing it out loud, I would laugh out loud. But usually mm -hmm. I'm kind of like in the zone when I'm reading. But, okay. you know, yeah, I do hit some sometimes. Jack Finney's Good Neighbor Sam just about killed uh, me. Okay. And anything David Sedaris writes, right. uh, hilarious. I think uh, Lucky Penny, that's a young adult graphic novel, Okay, was one that made me laugh out yes, loud. Yes, I read Lucky Penny. Yeah, And uh, there's a 
X Scott Men. Pilgrim, if we're talking yeah, biographic but there's novels. An, yeah. There's an X-Men comic where they team up with Spider-Man, mm-hmm. and all the X-Men are infested with uh, Doc Connor's lizard serum. And so the Wolverine lizard is climbing after him, and Spider-Man is just like, I kick your face! And he just kicks Wolverine <laughs> in the face. And I laughed hysterically. That's funny. Yeah. We've got a couple of children's books here. Yeah. Uh, Harlan Renaissance Party by Faith Ringgold. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, I know this one. Firebird by Misty Copeland. Illustrations by Christopher Myers. You know that one? No. Gordon Parks, How the Photographer Captured Black and White America by Carol Boston Weatherford. Mm -hmm. What a name. Harriet Tubman and My Grandmother's Quilt by Mm -hmm. Lorenzo Pace. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think you've read this one. The Crossover by Kwame Alexander. I sure have. Good, right? Yeah. That one's like in verse. Is that right? Okay. Brown Girl Dreaming by Jacqueline Woodson. Uh, And that's the end of our list. Okay. So we have these and many, many more on our displays in the adult and children's section. So we hope you check that out. Uh, Now, let's move on to our bookmark. All right. Maybe we should tell people what we're talking about. We're going to be, okay. We're going to be talking about graphic novels, but Uh not super, not superhero graphic novels. We're going to talk about. Spider-Man reference I just made will be the only Spider-Man reference. This is going to be things, um, things we have in our collection, things that are just uh, held up high uh, in the world of, of literature. Uh, I think more and more graphic novels are, are being recognized, um, you know, for yeah. the for the contribution that they are. Yeah. They're taken seriously. You yes. know, they're they're showing up. Um, we didn't this year so much, but last year, especially in the Youth Awards, uh, we had a lot of graphic novels represented. So we had a question about this on Twitter. You know, where to go if you're if you're interested in graphic novels. Uh, so we but wanted not to, superheroes, but not superheroes. So yeah. we wanted to address that. I've um, got. I've got a. I know you got a. You got a handwritten list. Pretty, yeah, I love hand, it. It's a pretty hefty list. That's so 1997 of you. That's true. Yeah, you, I used to love writing yeah, lists. Yeah, yeah, I know you. I know you on the back of your school books that you've you've wrapped in the like a uh, grocery bag yeah, paper. Yeah. You just like, oh, what am I gonna do with this? I'll just write lists just on it. Just write lists yeah. on it. Sure. Well, what have you been reading? Uh, well, I can't talk about some of that stuff right now. Okay. I think the only. Well, actually, I think I can talk about something. One, I did finish uh, Dragon Teeth. Oh, Crichton. oh, okay. So, it's a western. Yeah. Don't be fooled into thinking it's going to be uh, dino facts uh, galore. Yeah. Because, uh, one, it takes place before we knew lots of things about dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. We were mainly discovering dinosaurs back then, including yeah. the brontosaurus, yeah. maybe. Maybe. Um, it's really just a western. Like, the character ends up in Deadwood. Yeah. Meets the uh, Earp brothers. Okay. So, wow. um, and it's funny because I, I think Crichton just wanted to write a western every now and then. Because, like... Westworld, but without, you know, just knowing that, like, maybe people wouldn't pick up just a straight yeah. Western. Because, like, you have Westworld, which is a Western kind of. Yeah. And then you have Dragon Teeth, which is a Western kind of. Yeah. And, you know, I'm sure you can find others. So I, <laughs> I haven't read this one yet, but I plan to. And when it officially comes out, I think we should, we should do a little uh, Michael Crichton May. Michael Crichton Part 2 episode where we just talk about the posthumous releases. Yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get into that later. Yeah. Uh, so All right, so you read Dragon Teeth? Yes. And I read what... I guess I can talk about some other stuff that we won't be talking about. I read uh, a Ghost Rider comic book. So that's a superhero comic really? book, so not in the theme Oh, the one, the... the one from our new... Uh, yeah, the all-new okay. Ghost Rider. It's not right. uh, the old Ghost Rider that you're... Not, uh, not your Nicolas Cage Ghost Rider. Yeah. Not not the Ghost Rider that's tattooed on uh, about thousands of bikers' arms right now. Yeah. The uh, Johnny Cage. Different one. Uh, no, Johnny Blaze. Johnny Blaze. Cage. Johnny Cage is from Mortal Kombat. Ah. I got my Johnnies confused. Nerdy. Um... And I read Green Hornet Volume Two, which is the Kevin Smith one. Oh, so which is so the two the first two Green Hornet ones are based off of a script Kevin Smith was writing. Yeah, mm-hmm. that never got produced because he's kind of a lazy director. Right. Um, the second half was not as strong as the first. No, it starts strong. I think you know, looking at it as a whole, I think it's a pretty good story. I think I would have enjoyed the movie, but I don't know. I like as I was movie. watching, as I was reading the second half, I'm like. This would be a very 90s, like, final action. Yeah, probably. I don't know. I think for its time it would have been. I also don't love his humor. I know you don't. With some of the stuff. Um, but anyways, I finished The Girl Who Drank the Moon. Oh. The... Bored me oh, to boy. tears. Oh, boy. This thing has a... Hold did on. Did Kate look... finish that? Yeah, Kate, our children's did, librarian, did really she liked like it. it. I think she, she did. gave it four stars, she oh, said. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, or the way she this talked This one, the Newberry Award. Yeah. Newberry Award, 4.25 rating on... I don't know who this is for. It's it just goes on and on. The main character is just I don't know, I just didn't get it. They described the main character or the author did. Uh like she'd be mindful and mindless. She was thoughtful and thought you know, she was like uh, she was everything at okay. all times. So she was just it was just so boring. It was just so flowery. It was yeah. just I just didn't like it. I hated it, actually. Wow. I just wanted okay. it to end. 
So All right. if I was a, if I was well, the good age, for you for finishing it. If I was the age for that book, I would have been no way would I have wanted to finish that. So what do you think they saw in it? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Just uh, it's a journey, I suppose. It's a very okay. long journey. <laughs> it's a detailed world. It's it's just it's also that magic that's just like oh, and then she fed her starlight like spaghetti, and I was like uh-huh. oh god, I can't you know I can't do that kind of fantasy. Yeah. So anyway, okay. It's like reading a poem that's 500 pages long and also (laughs) not a poem. Right. So I didn't enjoy it. Okay. Well, (laughs) I haven't picked up anything to replace Dragon Teeth or The Girl Who Drank the Moon yet. I need a young adult book and I need a book just for me, man. Just for you. I don't know what to do yet. Just for your little heart. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Well, I had been reading Back Blast by Margarini, which I am really enjoying. I set it aside for a while because I'm coming up. Did I already say this last week? You did. That's yeah, a fart. Yeah, yeah you did. Very tasteful. Um, <laughs> I had to set this aside for a minute because we're coming up fast on the Pelican Brief book club, mm. and so I needed to read Pelican Brief. Yeah. So I'm currently about 50% done with it, and I actually have never read this one before, ah. and I'm really enjoying it, which is great because the last three Grishams I haven't liked. The last mm-hmm. two Grishams that I've read, I should mm-hmm. say. I read uh, Rogue Lawyer and yeah, you uh, didn't like. Whistler, which I didn't, I didn't like. like. And I also read The Racketeer, which is an old school one. Yeah, it's um, like uh, the 90s film. Oh, uh, no, actually. With, um, no. Uh, Timothy Dalton. No. Jennifer Connelly. No. I can never remember the main actor's that's name. That's The Rocketeer, and it's Billy Campbell. Billy Campbell, but right. that's The Rocketeer. This is The Racketeer. Right. It's about laundering money and that sort of thing. Yeah, I, th- but I, I'm glad I think the Nazis mentioned. are laundering money in that, too. And well, so The Rocketeer is like... I'm going to rocketeer into what? your place and beat what you up. What a coincidence. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? While we're on the topic of Jennifer Connelly for a minute, I want to mention that my wife and I watched... Uh, Labyrinth? No. Hulk? No. The <laughs> the adaptation that current just came out on DVD, I must have screened in some small theaters, of American Pastoral based on the Phil- Philip oh, Roth yeah. novel. I've seen that, yeah. Whew. Depressing? Yes. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That was... I mean, I think it was good. I think it was well mm-hmm. done. I think the acting was, was well done. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it just Jennifer Connelly does like her depressing movies. Yeah, so. yeah, that was rough. We yeah. had to watch several episodes of Parks and Rec after yeah. that just to like go on with our lives. So yeah. I don't know that I would recommend it yeah. because it was very, very depressing. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to watch it, and it is good filmmaking, so if you're going okay. to watch it, just have something locked and loaded. Okay. Afterwards, I would recommend The Rocketeer. Me too. Uh, it's a it's just a fun film. It is it's a great film. But also, yeah. uh, I would recommend Hell or High Water, which I just watched this weekend oh. on DVD. It's up for Best Picture. Chris Pine. Chris Pine. Yeah. Ben Foster. I'll take Jeff it. Bridges. Did you return it? Yes. Was there I, a hold on it? Can I have it? it? It might be in the collection right now. Okay. Uh, yeah. But it was good. It it has that like vibe. You're like, oh, this is gonna be a downer, but it doesn't leave you as depressed as apparently okay. this American pastoral is. All right. So um, it is a Western. You're right. It's a modern day Western. Like okay. uh, it takes place. It kind of like talks about how what they're doing because like the two brothers are robbing banks. Okay. Uh, like people comment like it's just kind of silly to do that. Like that day, the days of like robbing banks like old uh, gunslingers in the West had long gone. Mm-hmm. But those were the days, my friend. Yeah. Remember when you and I just used to run around the West robbing yeah. banks? Oh yeah. Old Nick well, you and had Eric. To. You had to, and it was expected yeah. on yeah. some level, so yeah. it was okay. Yeah, it was okay. You know, I'll tell you, uh, the twentieth <laughs> was President's Day, as you'll recall. Yeah. Uh, and so we had a little bit of a President's Day marathon. Watched some West Wing, the great Aaron Sorkin Is West this Wing end show. With you watching my fellow Americans. I wish <laughs> that would have been great. I actually really wanted to watch the American President with Michael Douglas, but I could not find okay. my copy. So you probably took it because you love romantic comedies about presidents. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Also, Kevin Klein's Dave is great. And I haven't seen that in a long <laughs> okay. time. But uh, I watched Killing Reagan, which uh-huh. is uh, an adaptation of the, the um, and real life, but an adaptation of the <laughs> Bill O'Reilly, Martin Dugard right. book. And the book I know drew a lot of criticism. From, because like, Reagan wasn't killed. Well, sure. <laughs> uh, but from Reagan historians and just historians in general saying uh, this is very inaccurate. So mm-hmm. I can't speak for the accuracy of the book. Mm-hmm. Um, in the special features, the National Geographic Channel made a big point of saying how hard they tried to make it accurate. Right. So I don't know. But uh, regardless, it was a good movie. Speaking of Bill O'Reilly, he has okay. a picture book All right. with James Patterson. Down. Yes. Did you I see saw this? That. I can't remember I what don't it's called. Understand? I, I had to ask our children's. I had to ask Kate, our children's librarian, which one of these is the co-author. Yeah. You have to imagine it's just two ghostwriters yeah. now. Yeah. 
So and not Ghost Rider, Ghost yeah. Rider, Ghost and not Rider. Ghost Rider. Ghost the show. Like, you Sam guys, Jackson. we have to focus. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter one. <laughs> anyway, Killing Reagan. Yeah, movie was very good. Okay, I haven't read the book yet. Right. I plan to though. I like those books, and here's what I like about them. They're they I would kill people who didn't. Well, they're just they're written very like. Uh, like pulse pounding and exciting. Yeah. They're page turners. Yeah. Don't read those and think, well, now I've read the definitive history of this assassination Agreed, attempt yeah. because, uh, and I don't think anyone, okay. I don't think anyone would say that those are like super, uh, you know, historically accurate, yeah. but uh, they're very fun. So anyway. I like the way we're recording in the dark with only your desk, your green desk lamp here. Yeah. It kind of makes us feel like we're uh, all the president's men. Yeah. Uh, we're Robert Redford and Dennis Hoffman. Did I say Dennis? It's, isn't it Dustin Hoffman? Dustin Hoffman. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I feel like I should be Redford. Redford. Darn it! <laughs> That's fine. Dustin Hoffman's the uh, ladies' man in that movie. Oh, okay. So I'm a okay. Sure. All right, you can take it. Anyway, uh, all of this has sprung out of our bookmark, I'll remind you. <laughs> sure. So I finished uh, several things, uh, several graphic novels, uh, none of which I liked. So I'm not going to oh, I'm not going to get into those. Burnage. But uh, I did read Tracy Letts' play Superior Donuts. Now, we talked about this a little bit last week. Yeah, you were confused just, by it. I am confused by it. And so I read the play. And I understand it a little more. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, I wish you'd read the play so that we could talk about it. Because it's, hmm. it's one of those ones where it's like, I don't think that you could get out of it what you need to just by a dry reading. Like, I think it's a play that has to be yeah. performed yeah. to know whether it's like it, any good or yeah. not. Is but, a dry reading just me when my mouth is dry yeah. reading aloud? Yeah. Okay. That's it. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I, I can't say that I would recommend yeah. running out and reading this play. It was interesting. Uh, yeah. That's my... It, <laughs> It sort of like lazily dealt with some race issues and, oh. and different things like that. Uh, but it never really went deeper than like stereotypes. Wait, did it solve race It issues? solved racism. Yeah. Oh my did. gosh. Yeah. Just, uh, just some colors and uh, no. So anyway, it was kind of like, I, it left me intrigued because mm. I think like directing that play would be challenging and interesting, <gasps> but I don't know. Are you directing that play? No. Are you taking it upon yourself right now? No. No, I'm not. I'm not. Okay. I'm just telling you. He's blushing. He, he th- he's thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I'm reading Pelican I Brief couldn't. right now. <laughs> which uh, I also want to mention, uh, the book club for Pelican Brief was originally scheduled for March 1st. Uh-huh. But I'm going to be in Albany for... Uh, Albany. Albany. For... Uh, <laughs> thank you. That got away from me there. <laughs> for Advocacy Day. Uh, uh-huh. Next week, we're going up there. So I'm not even going to be here. So we had to move the book club to March 8th. So if you want to join us for the Pelican Brief, you got an extra week. Yeah. So I'm sure your wife will appreciate that. Yeah. So Are you enjoy it. You said you're enjoying it. I really like it. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I think this will. One, I think this one will be. So a you hit. just don't like because the ones you listed, those are all like new. Racketeer is. I mean, it's newer. Like 2014 on, it feels like. Yeah. Well, right before it was the Whistler, and then before that was uh, Rogue Lawyer, mm-hmm. and before that was Grey Mountain, and I really liked Grey Mountain. Oh, okay. So maybe it's just not modern day. Yeah. I don't know. I think yeah. it's just. Rogue Lawyer was really more like short stories, vignettes yeah. with a recurring character. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. If, if you want to know all my thoughts on these, you can go back to our Grisham episode, that which coincidentally Rogue. also features, features my brother Steve. Steve. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Four uh-huh. times. Yeah. Four times. Uh, that's it for me as far as my bookmark goes. I got a stack of things that I want to read. Yeah. Uh, and right now I'm pounding through Pelican Brief. Is that the stack that I pushed into the mud today? I was like, hey, nerd. Tell me you didn't. Was yeah. that you? Yeah. Was that you? Yeah, you couldn't tell because I had my hoodie on. No, you whipped creamed my glasses yeah. so I couldn't see anything. Here's your books, nerd. Oh, oh man. And you're like, there must be more than this provincial life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Topical. Yeah. Because of the Beauty and the Beauty Beast. Beauty and the Beast movie, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, Congratulations, you're Belle. Wow. And I'm just... Hey, like, hey, not for nothing, but that's the lead role. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is the lead role, the titular character. Yeah, I'm, so. I think I'm just, like, bully number two yeah. in that. Yeah. So I'm you went later Gaston. in the scene when Gaston's like, we must kill the beast. You're like, yeah, kill him. That's <laughs> yeah. it. That's you. I probably get, like, two beat lines. up by the... Uh, the footstool dog. Yeah, you probably, yeah, yeah. The Ottoman dog. Yeah, you're the one where he jumps up and he bites the, the pants off. Yeah, and, and I'm wearing the heart print underwear. Yeah. yeah, that's you. Oh, no! That's you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a nerd! That's a wrap on Eric Mickles. Thank you, Eric. Hey, thanks. All right, let's talk book news or book. What do we call no, this? Book news. Book drop. Remember, we were going to call, yeah, it, right. the we're gonna call drop. it book drop. That's right, we were going to call it book drop. All right, what's coming out, my buddy? <laughs> okay, so these are the books that are coming out uh, February 21st, okay. 2017. Yeah. Um, what do we got? We got a horse walks into a bar, and he goes, "Nay!" <laughs> Somebody says, "Get that horse out of here!" I'm yeah. done. Yeah. I, I got nothing yeah. left. Uh, it's by David uh, Grossman. 
Yeah, he is a gross man. Wait, but you know who David Grossman is. I do. I thought you did. I thought he was, this name looked familiar to me. Are you thinking of Lev Grossman? Oh, I am. David Grossman, you tricked me. Yeah, I don't know. Well, this is translated by is. Jessica Cohen. It's a, uh, he wrote To the End of the Land. So he writes a new novel. I can't help you. Bar. I can't help you. Sorry, I thought I was talking about uh, Lev Grossman. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, a Cast of Vultures by Judith Flanders. Uh, there was every possibility that I was dead and my brain hadn't got to the memo. Or hadn't got the memo, sorry. <laughs> or maybe it was that I wished I were dead. On reflection, that yeah, was maybe. more likely. So, maybe. Uh, do they have anything nice to say? It's a, oh, she's a best selling author. I've never heard of her. Continues the sharp witted series starting, starring book editor and amateur sleuth, Samantha Clare. <gasps> Wait, isn't that Castle? Isn't Castle an amateur sleuth? Yeah. And also a book writer? Yeah. All right. Death of a Ghost. What do you oh, think that is? Oh, no. A Hamish, uh, Hamish Macbeth mystery. Oh boy. MC Beaton. MC Beaton here to say this ghost. All right. No. <laughs> you had your chance. I was so. I hated myself for doing the I'm here to say. Yeah, that thing. was that pretty. Was, that was cliche. Oh, You're right. Geez. That's okay. I put you on the spot. Yeah. You didn't expect me to yeah. start beatboxing. No. I, I don't know anything about this book. Yeah. I should have just like. Read hey, the description. Hey, shoulda, woulda, coulda, yeah. my friend. Uh, all right, so this book, shoulda, woulda, coulda. No, I'm kidding. Uh, Last Day on Earth, Stories. Oh. By Humanity. <gasps> no, oh. this is by Erica Punk, Punk, Pushner. Okay. Pushner. He wrote Music Through the Floor and Model Home. He's an award-winning author, Nick. <laughs> so, uh, so there you go, Last Day on Earth. All right. Huh, you like uh, finding a friend for the end of the world right yes yeah, seeking a friend for the end Se- of the world yeah steve carell and uh kira knightley kira knightley yeah. yes i do it's one of my favorites uh fun fact about kira knightley ex-girlfriend of mine that's uh oh that's a place where that happened let me check here in your dreams nope oh it's true yeah wow congratulations yeah. we broke up because to of her that. for dumping you <gasps> how'd you know we broke up mutually because of the distance that is not what she All told right. me rusty puppy <gasps> oh a hap and leonard novel oil turn is that the puppy? Yeah, he's rusty. Uh, do you do you recognize Hap and Leonard? Yeah, I haven't read this series, but I know okay. it. Okay, well, Hap and Leonard investigate a racially motivated murder that threatens Look to out. tear apart their East Texas town. Oof, that's going to be rough. It is going to be rough. Uh, traveling with Ghost. A lot of ghost talk. A memoir. I hope none of those ghosts are murdered. By Shannon Leon Fuller. Uh, okay. What else we got? I, I don't can know. tell you're super excited by these. I am. I'm waiting uh, for I'm waiting oh. for the gold. Uh, I hope you're saving the best for last. Yes. Uh Star Wars Empire's uh-huh. End Aftermath. Bum, 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 this is book three of Aftermath. Oh no. Chuck Wendig? Yes. Nobody Chuck likes Wendig. these books. All right. Why are they you locked into a trilogy? Three, right? No, I haven't. Because the world is like, these are terrible. Every end is a new beginning. Oh boy. Yeah. That, that's almost as bad as you're and I'm here to say. Yeah. That's Actually, how cliche that I'm is. I'm pretty sure uh, the Oracle says that in The Matrix Revolution. Really? Yeah. Doesn't she say that? Or Probably. Is it every beginning has an end. I've disavowed all knowledge of the Matrix sequels, okay. so I can't. Sure. Um,. Let's see. Oh, Let's, yeah. Homo Deus, A Brief History of Tomorrow. Wait, what? Mm-hmm. That. By Yuval Noah Harari. I'm sure that's exactly how it's pronounced. <laughs> well, uh, no, I've got a go. couple. I've got we a got couple a, that I'm going to have to pronounce. And we've it's got not a history of tomorrow, my friend. Boy. Uh, let's see. Oh, hey, you're in here. Really? As he was hit by the bus, slowly. I was driving a bus? Nick hit the pavement slowly but I, and the oh. bus continued to drive over him the bus is driving squishing over me. nick what? like a grape whoa. under a boot whoa unfortunately the bus went quickly into reverse mode oh my gosh this is boy you did not want to read this this is elaborate yeah. this eric is... now king of england oh my gosh well i you don't need to hear that yeah all right uh can you ex- no you'll explain the next one to me but okay here's a book it's called high noon the hollywood blacklist and the making of an american classic by hi glenn frankel is that you saying hi to noon yeah boy <laughs> and you're here to say yeah so have you ever seen high noon uh gary cooper no grace kelly it's no, pretty good i haven't seen it i'd like to uh all right explain to me this uh i me mine by george harrison ah okay there's an extended edition coming out uh-huh which what is I Me Mine? I Me Mine is uh, 
it, well, the one that came out a while back uh, is basically Harrison goes through all of his songs and explains like what the meaning is and why he wrote it and what mm-hmm. he was inspired by. And it also has sort of like a little bit of a biography as okay. well. It's more focused on the music than like his life. Right. But now they're coming out with a big, like expansive, mm-hmm. uh, definitive version of it, which I think is going to have more, um, more of the biography stuff. There's, there's not really been uh, a good like scholarly um, right. George Harrison uh, biography. I mean, there, there are certainly there are George Harrison biographies. Behind Sad Eyes is an example of one. Mm-hmm. But um, nothing that, that you'd really say, wow, that's the definitive one. Okay. So I think they're trying to kind of, right. you know, put Did this Did you like there. I Me Mine? I actually didn't read it. <gasps> My brother Steve loves it. He's he's a big George Harrison fan, so he's read it Are you going to read this one then? Yes, I am actually. Okay. We, it, we Our copy should be here soon. Are you excited about Paul McCartney having a new album out this year? What? Are you excited about Ringo Starr having a new album out this year? What? Are you excited about the fact that Ringo Starr has Paul McCartney guesting on his album? What? Yeah. That, honestly, this gets me so excited. Whenever yeah. whenever they do anything together, it's like Ringo Starr and Paul McCartney pass each other in the street. I'm like, it's the Beatles! <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I am very yeah. excited. And actually, I did not know this until mm-hmm. you sent me that link. So you're you welcome. you broke the news. Yeah, you scooped me that, you're on welcome. this one. Yeah, yeah. They they do this now and then. They'll play they'll play on each other's albums. Paul McCartney did a great uh, guest spot on Ringo's album. Why not? Mm-hmm. He played bass on a couple of tracks, and then they did kind of a duet uh, in one hmm. uh, called "When I Walk with You." It's very good. Okay. Very good. So yes, I am excited. All right, uh, we got some young adult books. Uh, Conjuring of Light. This is book three in the Shades of Magic series. Okay. The first one is a darker shade of magic. The second Ooh. one is a gathering of shadows. Spooky. Bring this up because we just ordered all three of these books, oh. so we will have this in our collection. Well, thanks for bringing this it is up. By then. V. E. Schwab. Schwab. Uh, Ronit and Jamel, or J- no, I'm just gonna say Jamel. Yeah, why not? Uh, Pamela L. Laskins. Uh, can you guess what this is a retelling of? Ronit and Jamel. Romeo and Juliet. You're right. It's because of the R and the J. Yep. That's how I knew. Yep. R and J. That's what they called themselves. Optimus die first. Optimus Prime? No. Wait, no. is this no, Nomeo and Juliet we're talking about? No, no. We're not talking about R- Nomeo and Juliet. I showed this is it. a different book I now. showed Nomeo and Juliet. Yeah, and it was no. a huge hit. I, okay. Yeah, you said no one would come. And but then lots of people came. A lot came, of people yeah. came. So yeah. I, I yeah. guess maybe you were wrong. I'm sorry. Uh, Optimus die first by Susan Nelson. If Optimus die first, I'm in the clear, okay? <laughs> No, because I'm, I'm not an optimist. Oh, oh, optimists yeah. die first. They okay. will die first. Yeah, no, you're fine. Yeah. You are, you are hella oh, fine. Li- <laughs> Did you say I'm hella fine? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, oh, the tag on this book says "Life Ahead." Proceed with caution. Uh oh, <laughs> beep, beep, beep. That is, that's a bumper sticker right Cut there. Cut it out. Hey, uh, the Legend of Zelda art and artifacts. <laughs> but I guess who? <laughs> Nintendo. Wow. It's one of those encyclopedias. We have... You know, uh, I was a little freaked out when Nintendo gained sentience, but they're doing good stuff, so... Yeah, just putting out books about their uh, material. Yeah, just doing that kind of stuff and... They have a... Teaming uh, up with Cyberdyne and whatnot. They have a book called uh, Hyrule Historia, Uh and it's just, like, a collection of, like, art and history of all the Legend of Zelda games and the worlds and characters. We had that to our collection... And we could not keep it on our shelf for a very long time. Hmm. And so this is brand new. This is just coming out. Um, People are very excited. Okay. Are you excited? Yeah. I love Zelda. Oh, I haven't played one since... uh, Sorry. I haven't played one in forever, though. I haven't played one since the 64. All right. But I I love them. For a long time, I used to think I was going to get the Triforce tattooed on my arm. (laughs) But... You know, I actually kind of think that would be cool. And I think that says more about me. Than it does right here, you. right on my left arm, right here on oh, my shoulder. Yeah. So no. I can lift my sleeve up and be like, hey. Yeah. Better than that one you have on your lower back. What is that, a butterfly? Uh, it wasn't it's supposed to be. a butterfly? No. It was okay. a face, but it got the guy dub- just doubled it. Oh. Yeah. It was my face. Your So it was like I was always looking at people from no matter what direction I yeah, was going. Yeah, you can watch. Hmm. So. Okay. Yeah. But now it's a must symmetrical have, butterfly. That must have taken hours. Yeah. I said, you're surely done with the... One picture. He's like, oh, you wanted one? No pain, Too no late gain. Now. Yeah. I was you, also thinking. That's what happens when you fall asleep yeah. in a tattoo parlor. Here's what else I was thinking instead of the okay. Triforce. Now. Tell me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex footprint. That's pretty good. Right? Not just the JP logo, like on your hip? No. Come on. On my hip? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's where the dinosaurs have it. Yeah. You're better than a dinosaur? No. Have you ever seen the show Dinotopia? Yeah. Is it good? It was terrible. Oh, okay. <laughs> Based on a book series. You know, it's hard to be... 
a dinosaur like it's fan. Hard, just period. It's hard to be a dinosaur. That's true. But it's hard to like like dinosaurs. If you wrote a children's book called It's Hard to Be a Dinosaur, I would buy so many copies. <laughs> That'd be great. I, would, I just want to support your art anyway. Yeah. But you're saying. Because like name me a good dinosaur movie that isn't Jurassic Park. Like uh-huh. a live action dinosaur movie uh-huh. that's cool. What's that one with where Whoopi Goldberg teams up with a T Rex? <sighs> That's Theodore Rex. Theodore Rex. See, this is my yeah, problem. It's go. the same. Like, there's yeah. no cool dinosaur shows. There's no cool dinosaur uh, movies. You're besides forgetting Jurassic. dinosaurs. The ABC <laughs> <laughs> family no, sitcom. There's no great dinosaur video games except for maybe Dino Crisis. Uh, I and can't, I can't help you here. One or two. Dr- it's just like outside of the Jurassic Park brand, there's like nothing. Yeah. Sure, they show up in King Kong every now and then. Dino fans are the forgotten minority. We just don't have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Anyway, you just listed so many huge blockbuster films and things. I, it, all all we I have listed, is one huge blockbuster film series. We have Jurassic Park, but that's like saying like, "Oh, I really like pirates, but all I have is the Pirates of the Caribbean films." Yeah, you'd be kind of bummed. You would want like real pirate stuff. Yeah, you'd want, I don't know, what's another pirate? Boy, pirate fans have it rough yeah. too. What well, they got black do? sails. Yeah, on TV, Blackbeard's Ghost, classic Dean Jones Disney movie. Oh yeah. Oh, right. Muppet Treasure Island. Yeah. Stop complaining, right pirate there. fans. You're right. Jeez. <laughs> A bunch of crybabies. Yeah, there was no dinosaur Muppet movie. Yeah, why not? Oh boy, that'd be fun. That would be fun. Okay, let's let's get on to your advanced notices. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want it. You're done with the dino. Yeah, done with my the dino rant. Okay, all right, sure. <laughs> oh boy, let's see here. Well, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a large print title coming your way. Uh, this is book seven. Call so I me surprised. Hope, I hope. That you've read the first six. Otherwise, you got some catching up to do, okay. my frere. Coming out in April, The Champagne Conspiracy, Wine Country Mysteries, number seven, mm. by Alan Crosby. Winter has come to the <gasps> Montgomery Estate Vineyard in Atoka, Virginia. Lucy Montgomery and winemaker Quinn Santori have decided to make champagne, a first for the vineyard. I'm out. That's so boring. Hmm. I'm not going to read you anymore, but The Champagne okay. Conspiracy, <laughs> Cozy Mystery, Book 7 of the Wine Country Mystery is coming out in large print in April. So large mm-hmm. print fans, mm-hmm. walk, don't run. Right. No, run, don't walk. I Get here quickly is all I'm saying. Yeah, run, don't and walk. Run, don't but walk. But you shouldn't run in a library. Why not? Oh, it's the public area. There's people around. Yeah. Elderly. Go on. Into them. Go they on. All over. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Okay. Uh, oh, boy. You're, you're going to be excited about this one, too. Uh, new from uh, up-and-coming author James Patterson. Yeah, he is up-and-coming. James Patterson with... Well, that's a lot of people. What is this? It's a collection. Oh, of my shorts. gosh. Oh, wait. Is this a collection of his it's book not, shots? I don't think it's book shots, but it is a collection. Uh, Your unpreparedness is making No, I'm nauseous. just... I'm confused about it. And, okay. From the number one New York Times bestselling author of Suzanne's Diary for Nicholas and Sundays at Tiffany's, two heartwarming tales about the power of a good story to open up our eyes to life's possibilities. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Two heartwarming tales about the power of a good story? Yeah. I don't think that's what they meant to the say. The power of a good story, man. Okay. You've never right. read a good story and you've been like, oh, the power. Yeah, but the, the stories aren't about the stories. The stories are about the... Do you know what I'm saying? It's saying it's tales... Never mind. Anne McWilliams has lost everything. After her marriage falls apart and a hurricane destroys her home, she realizes that her life has fallen out of focus. So she takes to the road to ask long-lost friends and strangers a simple question. What's your best story? It is about stories. I... <laughs> Can the funny, tragic, inspirational tales she hears on her journey help Anne see what's been missing? Well, what do you know? Tyler Braun seemingly has it all. Successful company and more money than he knows how to spend. But he has no life. So he hires a struggling novelist to write one for him. There are no limits to the fictional world that bronze money can transform into a reality, and he soon becomes the protagonist of a love story beyond his wildest imagination. But will Tyler Braun be able to write the happy ending himself? Mm-hmm. Those sound bad. Yeah. I didn't want to I didn't want to tell you I was bored because I'm tired because my beagle kept me up all night. Yeah. But those sounded boring. Snoopy's a beagle. He is a beagle. What? That's all. Thanks. Uh, anyway, so James Patterson fans, yeah, God bless you for hanging in there. Yeah, you know I will say though that remember that like weird robot apocalypse James Patterson book that we talked about yeah. forever ago. Yeah, it just came out, uh-huh. uh, and I picked it up and looked at it. Doesn't seem good. It came out. Yeah, it came out. When? I don't know. I saw it in Target yesterday. Ooh. So somebody didn't show up on the New York Times bestseller list. Uh oh. Yowzer. All right. Here's a couple other advanced notices coming out in April. Uh, fans of Lisa Unger. 
uh, daughter of Felix Unger from The Odd Couple. No, Eric, come on. <laughs> the Red Hunter by Lisa Unger. Yeah. What is the difference between justice and revenge? About $2 uh, million. Dollars. Whoa! <laughs> In this buzzworthy new standalone thriller by New York Times bestselling author Lisa Unger, uh-huh. two wronged women on very different paths find themselves in the same dark place. Mm-hmm. I like how the question about like justice or revenge. Yeah. I mean, it's just been told a bajillion times. When? I, I could just name like when two superheroes. <laughs> See, fans of fans of justice. Uh-huh. All, all they have is just this one book. They need a whole... <laughs> all right. And then finally, uh, from, <laughs> from Elizabeth Strout. So fans uh-huh. of Olive Kidridge uh-huh. or My Name is Lucy Barton, yeah. look no further than April here in the David A. Howe Public Library because we'll have Anything is Possible. And you know what? It's true. It is true. Anything is possible. Yeah. I think we've seen that. Where? From, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> from number one New York Times bestselling author and Pulitzer Prize winner Elizabeth Strout comes a brilliant lattice work of fiction that recalls Olive Kittredge in its richness, structure, and complexity. Mm. Written in tandem with My Name is Lucy Barton and drawing on the small town characters evoked there, these pages reverberate with the themes of love, loss, mm. and hope that have drawn millions of readers to Strout's work. Hmm. So I guess it's connected to the other one. Hmm. Interesting. When it says written in tandem, does that mean two people, two typewriters, riding a tandem bicycle? Riding a tandem bicycle. Yes, it does. At the same time. It does. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Okay. (laughs) Good. All right. Well, that's it. All right. That's some exciting stuff. I want to hear what's on the New York Times bestseller list. Spoiler alert, not James Patterson. Sherilyn uh, Kenyon. Yeah. She debuted a new book, uh, Born of Vengeance, but it's at number 15. She didn't even crack number 10. Those are solid numbers for Sherilyn Kenyon. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, it's the next installment of the League series. Yeah, I don't know. The youngest son of the Corvarian Emperor seeks revenge for the slaughter <laughs> uh, of his family. Okay. okay. Poor guy. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Nick. You're not going to be able to do your bit. Actually, you are. Darn it. Stupid asterisk. But, so when there's an asterisk on the New York Times bestsellers list, that means yes. the book and the one above it uh-huh. had equal numbers. Yeah. So number 11 and 10 sold the most. Mm-hmm. So number 11, small great things. <gasps> oh, like push pins. Yeah. You can hang up posters, <laughs> yep. schedules, uh-huh. anything you want. Yep. Just grab a little cool. pin, push it in. You yep. don't need a hammer. Right. It's a push pin. Small great things. Yeah, it's not a hammer pin. Jody Pickle, small great things. Yeah. Number 10, uh, Universal Harvester, a mystery thriller set in Iowa oh. by John Darnell. Huh. That's all the description is. A mystery slash thriller set in Iowa. Okay. Uh, number nine, My Not So Perfect Life by Sophia Kinsala. Mm. A young woman fired from her job in London is forced to reconsider the meaning of success. I guess well, so. Well, probably not being fired. Okay. <laughs> number eight, The Girl Before by J.P. Delaney. A sadistic architect builds a modern house that controls its young female inhabitants oh, in a no. psychological thriller. Mm-hmm. That is psychological yeah. and thrilling. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number seven, Two by Two by Nicholas Sparks. Oh. Not great, according to Kendra Mitchell. You have just but to look at the last episode, number 78, to That's hear all true. about Nicholas Sparks. Yeah. And that book. And that book. We'll get a full review. Yep. Uh, number six, The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. Hey, hey. It's the monkeys. Yeah, it is the one. No, that's the book club book that we're doing today, so it's probably too late for you to join us, folks. No, that's true. But we're talking about Underground Railroad today. I'm I'm excited to see what the group thinks. Look at you in two years getting a Ringo album, a Monkeys album, a McCartney, McCartney album. All you yeah. need now is a secret Beach Boys album to come out of the. That's why Ether. God made the radio came out just a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. But you so, need like your move, David Cassidy, who is uh, well. I mean, he's a he's a solo artist, but also from the Partridge family. Got his big big break in the Partridge family. <laughs> oh. uh, oh. I think I love you. Yeah, I know that. Okay, song. Thank you. Uh, number five. Wait, was that a song or was that just? It was my way of telling you <laughs> through song. Number five. Uh, huh, man, just go. What ahead. am I so afraid of? I don't know. I think you're afraid. You're not sure of. I love. There's no cure for. Yeah. I gotta stop. All right, mm-hmm. number five, right behind you. Ah! <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was Lisa Gardner. Oh my gosh, yeah. Lisa Gardner. Lisa Gardner, don't ever sneak up on me like <laughs> yeah. that again. Yeah. Number four, the I Whistler. I want the people to know that I really committed to that bit. Yeah. I looked behind it, me. Jumped. I pretended like Lisa yeah. Gardner was behind yeah. me. It was a whole. Yeah. If yeah. this were a visual medium, if Pete Bangles was here recording us right now, uh-huh. 
That would have been a dinner theater show yeah. right there. Yeah, but then we would have had to pay uh, Lisa Gardner for her likeness. That's true. So yeah. Uh, number four, The Whistler by John Grisham. Man. Number three. Godspeed, Grish. Grish has like uh, a stealthy surprise book coming out in June. Did you hear about this? Well, if you know about it. Well, yeah, but I mean, it's like a beach. Yeah. It's like a beach. Hey, mystery I'm gonna thriller. I'm gonna surprise punch you in about two seconds. Don't. Okay. <laughs> no, it's just usually <laughs> his books don't come out that way. I mean, usually yeah. it's like a big fanfare and everything. But just on Facebook, mm-hmm. he was like, "P.S. I wrote another book. It's coming out in June." Yeah. So. You know, maybe yeah. that'll maybe that'll break the spell of the last uh, couple. Yeah. Wait. So. Was he under a curse? He was under a curse. Oh, yeah. okay. Yep. Sherilyn Kenyon put him under a curse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, number three, Never Never by James Patterson and Candace Fox. Yep. Uh, number two, New This Week, Echoes in Death. Echoes, 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 echoes. By J.D. Robb. Rob, 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 Rob. <laughs> Lieutenant Eve Dallas, 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 Dallas of the NYPD NYPD. investigates a fatal <laughs> home invasion. Fatal. By Nora Roberts, Robert, writing pseudonymously. Pseudonym- uh-huh. Go on, keep going. Help! I got all day. Help! J.D. Robb, this is book 427 in Ooh. the In-Death series. Number one, new this week. Ooh, I'm excited. Norse Mythology by oh, Neil Gaiman. Neil Gaiman sure. A retelling of Norse folklore. Sure. I'm not sure why it's in fiction and not nonfiction. Good, good, good call. Okay. I don't know. Because normally, like, if I wrote a book about Greek mythology, it would go in the... Is that what you're working on? No. A book about Greek mythology? I'm no scholar of Greek mythology. And neither is Rick Riordan. That doesn't stop him. Uh, he's he's probably... Decent. You think he is? Yeah. You think, think he's he just is. making it all up as he goes? Maybe. He's, oh, really? So he was just like, oh, uh, Hercules has a chocolate addiction. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say hammer, because Hercules, you know. Uh-huh. What? doesn't have a hammer he does he has the big hammer no that's thor oh boy <laughs> that was embarrassing <laughs> yeah you're right did you do that on purpose no you know what it was i was trying to find here it is episode 51 if you want to hear all about neil gaiman you can look at episode 51 yeah. and i was that th- doesn't excuse no, you for doesn't. saying hercules has a big hammer no i <laughs> <laughs> maybe the dwayne the rock johnson movie hercules he had a big hammer you know what you know what it was though that. i'm thinking of the 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 new hercules uh, series by no <laughs> the Thor the Thor series uh-huh. by Rick Riordan whatever that's Jeez. called that's what I was Magnus thinking Chase. of while I was trying to yeah. scroll through and find our Neil Gaiman episode yeah. which is episode 51 and remains one of our most popular episodes so if you'd like to hear about Neil Gaiman you can look at episode 51 so, so Greek mythology and North Mis- Norse mythology are basically your Star Wars Star Trek problem. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I'm constantly saying exactly. the wrong thing. Exactly. So. Man, if I had Hercules' hammer, you would be in a lot of trouble <laughs> Look, right now. Look, we can't rule out that at one point, Hercules was fighting something, no. and all he had nearby a was a massive guy. hammer. Right? Okay, Hercules never had to put up a shelf. Come on. <laughs> okay. Come on. <laughs> yeah. By Zeus's beard, these books shall be stacked. Did I say he was known primarily for his hammer? No, <laughs> no I said true. he had one. Yeah. Yeah. I have a hammer. I'm yeah. not Hercules or Thor. Yeah. Hercules, you said you were going to put them out of those bur- bookcases today. Yeah. Magarot's my weekend. <laughs> Why don't you call Thor? I'm... Because <laughs> he has a hammer. Yeah. All right. Sure. Get me out of here. <laughs> Airlift me out of this joke. <laughs> okay. Neil Gaiman, episode yeah. 51. Norse, Look back. Uh, just mythology in general. It's just ripe for comedy. I guess it is. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Let's pivot away from this. I don't know how, though. I just <laughs> want to keep thinking about Eric, Hercules' domestic life you? and never right. constantly on him to do chores. So that's the New York Times bestseller <laughs> yeah. list. Are you going to read this Neil Gaiman book? I would like to. Yeah? Uh, I I read Edith Hamilton's book, Mythology. Okay. Are you familiar with that? No. It's a classic. It's a, like a go-to for telling, like... You know, retell not retellings, but is Percy Jackson in it? No, okay. it's very good. Like tellings of different mythologies. Oh, okay. Um, and I really like Norse mythology. It's just the history is you know, it's ancient Nordic and yeah, all mythology is kind of like boring. Oh, because like look at that. Well, none of it really like except Norse mythology does have an end. It has Ragnarok. Right. Right. Like you know, Greek mythology and stuff. It just like stops. Oh, you I know see. what I mean? Yeah. They just stopped. So yes stories. or no, you're going to read this? Yes. You're Sorry, that was a to. long answer. To. Okay. All right. So. Uh, well, I think that brings us to our main segment yeah. for today. Yeah. Listeners, say, is, what if we had g- told them we were talking about graphic novels and then everybody left, but then we started talking about something really awesome that they wish they had stayed for? Maybe, maybe we should talk about awesome things. Yeah, let's talk about it. 
These will be graphic well, novels. Today we'll do graphic novels, yeah. Okay. Right. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, okay, so graphic novels being a medium, not a genre, yeah. uh, that means there's lots of different stories there uh, and lots of different types of stories, mm-hmm. not just superheroes. And I understand people when they say that they don't like superheroes, they don't like superhero movies, yeah. they think it's stupid, right. it, it's out there, it's ridiculous, I get it. I don't really get it. I yeah. don't understand it. Are you yeah. dead inside? Yeah. Um, but at the same time... You understand that that's a truth. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But there's still like a lot of really good stories and like being told in graphic novel form. So we want to we wanna give you some uh, yeah. suggestions Shine some of light. really good graphic novels that don't involve superheroes mm-hmm. that you could read and re- when somebody's like, oh, I read Batman, you're like, oh, well, not me. Yeah. You can be like, I read this. This is what I so, read. So, uh, you know, I think before we move on, though, I think that you made a really interesting point. Thanks, man. Something that I've never thought about before is when you uh-huh. said, well, you said graphic novels are a medium, uh-huh. not a genre. Correct. I think that's really, I don't know, I like that. I I hadn't really thought about it in those terms before, but I think that that is a good way of of saying, like, you know, you you can get stories in all of these different mediums, and graphic novel is a part of that. Mm -hmm. It's not just, uh, I think people do tend to write it off as, like, you know, just sort of lump it in with, like, sci-fi or something. If that's not your thing, then fine. Mm -hmm. But, you know, graphic novels is is another mode of storytelling. So, you know, I think just saying, oh, I don't like graphic novels, Mm -hmm. you know, I think you should give it a shot. Yeah. Also, it's... uh, I mean, it's a great place for the indie scene. Mm-hmm. I don't read too many indie comics. Mm-hmm. Um, I read a bunch of, like, non-superhero stuff, but yeah. I don't read too many of, like, the black and white, you know, indie comics or Kickstarter comics or yeah. stuff. But, like, it's a better way for people to, you know, mm-hmm. rather than, you know, there's, like, self-publishing your ebook or something. Yeah. But that, that though, self-publishing your books it has a long way to go for mm-hmm. people, like, really taking it, like, super legitimately. Mm-hmm. Like Brad Thor, yeah. who hates it. Yeah. So. He does. Um. Oh, yeah. Well, I hated the Lions of Lucerne, so take Ooh, that, Brad, Brad Thor. Thor. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you just took the hammer to him. I guess I did. Yeah, thanks, Hercules. Hercules. Thanks, Hercules. <laughs> there, yeah. there you go. <laughs> now who went zero to hero? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we should we should start listing them. Yeah, tell me so, some of the ones you like. Um, I will say, though, a lot of these that I'm going to list off, mm-hmm. they're, they, the non-superhero ones tend to be a lot more adult. In nature, mm. a lot, uh, a lot more. If they were a movie or something, it's rated R. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, there are some ones I haven't read. I pro- I can't talk about Preacher mm-hmm. because I never. I read like the first volume of Preacher, maybe the first two, and I didn't like it. But that's now a show on AMC. Yeah, lots of people loved Preacher, and yeah. the show's doing really well. The mm-hmm. we got the series here that's checking out well. Um, and there's some other stuff I haven't read. Okay, but let's start with. Oh man, I've got a huge list. Maybe I should give you the list, and you help me through it. Sure. All right. <laughs> so I don't have to pick everything. Yeah. All right. Don't well, talk about the bottom three, though. Those are newer ones. Sure. Okay. But I think that, you know, while we are talking about Neil Gaiman, I mean, uh-huh. he, he's Sandman. the one Sandman. Yeah. He's the one who's really um, yeah. done that. And, you know, I think a lot of his uh, a lot of his books for kind of that middle age, kind of the 8 to 12, um, really are more like graphic novels, like Wolves in the Walls, for example. Oh, I mean, yeah. That's, a, that's like yeah. a creepy fever dream. Mm-hmm. But it's really a graphic novel yeah. disguised as a picture book. Yeah. I mean, the way it is. But I think he's probably most well-known in the graphic novel world anyway for Sandman. For Sandman. Which I can't stomach. But I want to hear about it. It's pretty grotesque. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, no, I would still read it today. Okay. Um, Sandman's great. We and again, you can go back to our Neil Gaiman uh, episode fifty one fifty one because we I talked. I feel like I talked a lot about yeah uh, yeah we covered Sandman Sandman so. sure. but it's great. Uh, I had said before that it was one person had once said it was the first sexually transmitted comic book because it was the comic that. Uh, guys would be reading and their girlfriends would see it, their girlfriends or wives, and they would pick it up and they would like it because, like, this is in the 90s. This is, like, the end of the 80s, early 90s, where all... It's, like, that crappy, macho superhero. Everybody's, like, eight times the normal size of a regular man. They've yeah. all got, like, 80 rifles attached to them. <laughs> you know, everybody's wearing an eye patch somewhere. You know what I mean? And yeah. so, like... Uh, you get Sandman, which is intelligent. It's uh, it's telling a lot of s- different stories because it's um, a lot of times it's a frame story where then the main character Morpheus Sandman comes in as like a Deus Ex Machina mm-hmm. to z- affect the story. Uh, a lot of times the stories that are being told are about uh, stronger female characters. Okay, and in the early '90s, you know, it, that really wasn't happening. Yeah, so it was the first one to gain. Uh, a lot more traction than outside the uh, the normal comic book readers of the 90s, okay. I would say. 
So it's just it's just good. It tells a lot of different stuff, a lot of like fairy tales, a lot of uh, mythology gets retold in very like mature, slightly graphic ways at times. Okay. Um, just great. A lot of uh, a lot of stuff about relationships in there. Uh, Morpheus is a very flawed character. He's an internal being. Mm-hmm. He's very flawed. He can't keep a relationship for one. Yeah. So, so, you know, he's just like you. What? What? You know how you can't keep your life together. But but I've been married for over ten years. Yeah, but in a way you can't. You know how you can't keep your life together. No. Like how your life's always on the rocks. No. You're like you're like Morpheus. I, things are going pretty well. Oh, all right. Okay. Well, not agree, according agree, to Sandman. Agree to disagree. <laughs> okay. Agree to disagree. <laughs> so, um, but again, like you said, it you have to be able to stomach some it's stuff. It's a tough read. There's a lot yeah, of uh, yeah. there's a lot of uh. Not gore, but a lot of uh, serial killing, we can I say, see. in that okay. throughout. You know, you All deal right. with... It's just a lot of bad stuff sometimes. Okay. But there's always some light at the end. All right. Uh, well, let me... I don't know if you read either of these. Did you read Tom Gold's? Did you read Moon Cop? No. Okay. Now, Tom, I should say, this list I have is all series. Okay. So these are all, like, ones that lasted more than, like, four or okay. five. So uh, Tom Gold does he has a couple of collections that are basically like one panel comic strips almost mm-hmm. but then he's done uh, most recently he did one called moon cop moon cop which is um that's checked out yeah i yeah. haven't been able to read it because it's just never yeah. been in it's really good i mean it's deceptively simple it's it's I mean, exactly what it sounds like there's a man who is a cop on the moon and patrols it mm-hmm. and it just uh it's mm-hmm. it's very simple illustrations very right. limited use of color uh, and it does such a good job of um, of demonstrating like loneliness, you right. know, like you just you just really feel for this character, <laughs> and he, he does just little subtle things. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's just it brings up a lot of like emotion. It's just right. very well done, uh, and I think that's a really good example of something that a graphic novel can can reach you in a way that you know if this was just a short story, right. you could get it, but. Right. You know, just something about adding that that visual element to yeah. it. I think it just makes it that much more. I don't know. In some ways, relatable. It's more relatable because yeah. you can see him. I felt the same way about his uh, work, Goliath, uh, and that's about the, yep. the, the Bible story, yep. <laughs> David and Goliath, uh, from Goliath's perspective. And that's another one that's. I mean, that's a tragedy. Mm-hmm. The way he writes that. So <laughs> both of those, uh, again, it's same same similar style. It's very very blocky, basic illustration, uh, almost right. no color. And yet you get to the end of it and it's emotional. It's like an emotional experience. So um, those will take you 10 minutes to read and they are so worth it. So, I mean, I would particularly recommend Moon Cop, which we do have here. Moon Cop. But, um, and I think they are a really good example of of the kinds of things that graphic novels can do. But You have my list. Yeah. Uh, well, I know you're a fan of Fables. So Fables! We'll Fables is great. I would always recommend Fables to somebody if they didn't, if they wanted to read comics but not superheroes. Okay. Um... If you've watched Once Upon a Time, it's mm-hmm. basically a ripoff of <laughs> Fables. In fact, okay. uh, Fables is written by Bill Willingham. He, uh, I think he took it to ABC. Okay. And they said no. And then lo and behold, they come up with Once Upon a Time. Um, he says it's fine. And yeah. besides, they use a lot of Disney characters anyways. Yeah. But his, his thing is that uh, there was a war in the world of Fables. And mm-hmm. so they all had to uh, move into the regular world. Um, and they just... Uh, put up shop in this town they call Fable Town. And nobody knows that they're fables or anything. So it's just all these, you know, fables and fairy tale uh characters just living their daily life. Uh Bigby Wolf, the big bad wolf, he's uh he's the uh sheriff. Um or Snow White's the uh the sheriff and he's uh a private detective. Okay. Um you got Prince Charming who can't keep a relation he's always good at like the beginning of the the relationship. Okay. Uh but he can't keep it together. He's got like three ex wives um you got rose red so she uh snow white's sister so she gets a a main role in there it's just uh it's a story about them you know not being in their homeland anymore and wanting to uh they kind of want to go back but they can't because it's all been destroyed and they're just trying to keep up shop it's very much about their relationships i've picked this up and i i don't know it just didn't it didn't appeal to me hmm. the fairy tale character yeah aspect of it i just yeah i didn't like it at it first seemed, it seems gimmicky uh just like just looking at it. like you hear the concept and it mm-hmm. seems like oh it's the same way i feel about once upon a time right. it just seems gimmicky no it, but i don't know fable has really like become something i mean yeah it's, it's well over now i'd say like, that fables uh kind of 
because it went on for a while. I think it's like 22, 23 volumes collected. Wow. Um, I knew it was long. That's longer than I would have guessed. I think it kind of, it has almost like a Sandman quality of like lore amongst itself. And there are, uh, later on, they get some very emotional stories. uh, They have the character Flycatcher, and we learn about his backstory. And it's really heartbreaking. It's just a sad story because he turns into a frog uh, every now and then. It's just like a a sad story about himself. Mm. Um, So it deals with politics and, you know fable life and okay you know it also has like creatures like goblins and stuff and they don't really they can't really integrate into society well okay so but it's good uh the big b is super in love with snow white she wanted anything to do with him what are you gonna do yeah that's sad so (laughs) um i want to jump to a couple of um I guess, I mean, these aren't really true, but they are they kind of fall in the same genre, and that would be uh, White Donkey, Terminal Lance by Maximilian Uria. Hey, did you read that? No. Okay. Uh, and Indy by Ethan Hawke. Indy I think you did read that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, both of these um, deal with historical, uh, you know, they're fictionalized mm-hmm. accounts of historical things that really happened. Uh, White Donkey, Terminal Lance is just, it, it follows a platoon of guys like in, in a modern day war. Mm-hmm. Uh, Indy is about the Apache Wars. Um, and what, I guess let's talk White Donkey for a minute, which you have not read. Right. That one, um, I think that one really, really uses to the fullest potential uh, the the medium of a graphic novel. Mm-hmm. Because I think it kind of, it it's written in a way that, you know, it, um, you sort of, um, underestimate it because it's a graphic novel. Mm-hmm. You know, you start it, you, you know, you're reading a comic book about some soldiers and it just goes to a really uh, dark and, and realistic and, mm-hmm. you know, ultimately tragic place. Um, but something about just reading that in, in you know, a, a quote comic book mm-hmm. form, uh, I mean, it, it's, you're not expecting it. So like as it, as it progresses and as it goes, I mean, you just really, um, I know I just had this, I was like, what am I reading? What is this? Like, what did this come out of, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, And that's another one where I think um, the limited use of color, it's basically white and green. There's Mm -hmm. like green shading and stuff. But other than that, it's uh, it's very, very minimal. Um, And so again, I just think that the the way that they kind of um, take people's expectations about what a graphic novel is, uh, tell a story that's so real and bring it to a a very believable but upsetting conclusion, I don't know. It's just well done. It's well mm-hmm. done and well worth the read. Uh, Indy is sort of it's similar in that it's you know the Apache Wars are obviously tragic and brutal and violent. Right. Um, and and who not, better to tell that story than Ethan than Hawk? Ethan Hawk, I know, <laughs> I know. Though I do like I've, I've read some of his other things and I do like them. But uh, anyway, what what did you like about Indy? Uh, I don't know. It was just it was just a well told story. Yeah. Uh, about you know how terrible. Yeah. Uh, it all went down. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think it's it's terrible. The Apaches. For this, for yeah. That's the food falls. Yeah. So yeah. it's just, you just see how many like deals were broken and yeah. uh, lies were told. And yeah. It's rough. It's, it's, uh, I, I like the drawings and that too. I mean, it's, it's, you yeah. know, you, you can read the expressions on the faces and things and, and that, that's adding another level. But Indy really, it made me curious about that era of history. So it was, it was a good story. Mm-hmm. It kind of shined a light on something and it made me curious, which I think is, you know, one of the highest compliments you could pay a book that it, yeah. you know, made you, um, you know, think even more. So anyway, uh, both of those we do have in our collection. Uh, I read them here and they're readily available. So yep. I, I encourage you to check them out. Let's talk Why the Last Man by Brian K. Vaughn. Yeah. Uh, Brian K. Vaughn shows up a lot on my list as well. Yeah, I see. Um, Yeah, Why the Last Man, that is also over now. I can't remember how many volumes it is. I want to say 10. That seems right. Um, It's the story of uh, this guy, York. He's just living in his apartment with his pet monkey. He's trying to be a magician. (laughs) uh, So it's a classic story. Yeah, it's a classic story. And it basically what happens is something happens and all the men in the world die. Yeah. Every, every man dies, except for York, yeah. who is the last man. Yeah. And so uh, it's kind of like a travel log as he like travels through. He's looking for his, uh, his girlfriend. I can't remember if, not fiance. I think he was planning to propose to her at the, he like. proposed over the phone. Right. Yeah. Um, it's been a while since. And she's in Australia and he's yes, in the States. She's in Australia. He's in the States. And so she, he wants to go find her. Yeah. Um, 
And so he's just traveling. But, of course, he's the last man. So there are uh, political parties and scientific parties. There's just a lot of different groups now that are after him to find out why he's still alive um, and to figure out what happened. You know, there are some people that are happy that all the men are gone. There are some people who are sad. Yeah. Um, And it's interesting because um, you, you know, you you say something like that. It's like, oh, it's post-apocalyptic. Like, well, no. Yeah. There's still half the population on earth yeah. the government doesn't just disappear right so like it's i i guess it it shows you uh the the pride of a like of a guy yeah. that he would be like whoa it's the end of the world and yeah. we're like well no we'll just yeah. we'll just keep you know delivering mail yeah you know so right. and you know running the government yeah we still have the white house um I read this based on your recommendation, and I read uh, I read the first hardcover vo- hover hmm, hardcover volume, mm-hmm. which is like the first two yeah. uh, trade paperbacks. So right. I guess like tw- it starts like a disaster movie because you it have does. all the men dying, and some are like you know some are like pilots and flying a plane yeah, at flying the time, and so you kind of but then it stops being a disaster movie. And yeah, just... I sort of like I was really intrigued by it, and I planned to to finish the series. I wished in the first volume, like the more I thought about it, the more I. I felt like they never, I mean, what you said is true. It's kind of like this travelogue of him going through. Mm -hmm. But they, in the first, at least in these first two volumes here, they don't really explore too much, like, it's still from, from like, a man's perspective. It's still about a man. It's not really about, like, uh, you know, what, it it doesn't really, it's not, like, from a woman's point of view. It's not. uh, That changes as it goes on. I hoped that Because he meets, he meets other characters, and they get their backgrounds, and they get uh, their stories. But then, like, the very last volume is Don't spoil like, it, or at least I'm read it. not the last, but like you the spoil last it, issue. Kick you right okay, in the lungs. I'm just saying, uh, it doesn't stay that way. Okay, so good, but yeah, because at first we just stay very close to York. Mm-hmm. Um, but he, he has a sister who's out there who's uh, we follow as well, so we follow her story. Okay, so yeah. it's uh, it's very good. Well, let's stick with Brian K. Vaughn for a minute then. Okay. Talk about um, well, let's talk about Saga. Saga. I haven't read Saga, but I know you have. Saga's so gross, but I love it. <laughs> it. The first panel, I don't know. The first panel starts with a very disgusting uh, image. Mm, okay. Um, but uh, the story is just so weird. It's this, like, fantasy, sci-fi, nonsensical... I mean, they're flying in a tree that grants wishes. Their, their babysitter is a ghost with only half, like, torso up. Uh, they ha- it, it's, just, it's just about these aliens... These t- Two people who are different species who are in love, okay. but their their people are at war, so it's a forbidden love. They have a baby, and they're being hunted because they could represent, you know, the idea that maybe this war is stupid and everything. Um, so it's just this, it's just this weird world where anything can happen, but it all kind of makes sense when it does. You don't, okay. you know, like when I say like there's a magic tree that grants wishes, like it doesn't. <laughs> It doesn't just do that, and like when stuff happens like that, it's like, oh yeah, of course, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, um, it's just it's just such a weird story. It's funny. Um, I wouldn't say it's action packed, but um, it's definitely violent okay. at times. Um, Brian K. Vaughn has a very weird sense of humor. Yeah, um, which is a good transition into Paper Girls. Yeah, it's it's it, with Paper Girls, which is another Brian K. Vaughn. That's a current one. Yeah, we have the first two volumes of that here. Yeah, it's um, it's a story about these teen girls who used to be who are, are Paper Girls get stuck in this weird time vortex that is also maybe a reality vortex. Yeah, it's just sending them all over the place. Uh, they're on the run because they shouldn't have gone through the time vortex. Yeah. Is what I can gather. Yeah, uh, within two volumes, I cannot tell you the. Full plot. It's yet. true. It's true. But I, you know, I really appreciate the the wit. I think it's, yeah. the dialogue is very clever. Mm-hmm. Um, again, stylistically, I think it's good. It's got kind of a vintage, yeah. uh, kind of a. I don't know what would you, how would you describe that art? I was going to say pinup, but that's not quite. No, that's not quite. I I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen that artist before. Uh, but he definitely the art style feels like it would fit in the eighties in terms of like movies. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's true. It's just interesting. Uh, Brian K. Vaughn got his start working for like Marvel. Well, I don't know if that was his start, but he did like that's when his name started Runaways getting bigger. Was Runaways early. for Marvel yeah. Comics, which is another. It's superhero, so I won't Esque. talk about it too yeah. much. But it's about a bunch of kids who find out their parents are supervillains. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it's not based like none of these are based on Marvel characters, so you could read it still hating superheroes, and I think you could still get something from it. Yeah, it's really good, but. 
he then went on and just started doing his own stuff. Like mm-hmm. he became a name working with these characters and then went on and like every time he did, starts a new series, it's a big hit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did that with Ex Machina, which is about a uh, the the mayor of New York who used to be a former superhero, mm-hmm. uh, but he was only like a superhero for like two weeks or something, uh, not long. But after nine eleven, he reveals his identity and is elected mayor. Mm. It's just it's just his story of being a mayor. And so like, there's that weird sci fi element. He can talk to uh, machines. He can talk oh. to technology. Okay, and that's his gift. But like. That rare that doesn't come in a lot. Like most of the time, <laughs> it's just dealing with political issues. Okay. Like Brian, it's like Brian K. Vaughn's soapbox for uh, <laughs> for his stances on uh, what's going on at the time. Okay, set in this alternate universe where he saved one of the towers. Oh, so wow. it's just a, it's a very it's like when you say somebody's like oh so it's gonna have like super it's like that never really comes into play. His power never comes into play. Sometimes he's being attacked. Uh, by people and so he'll use it but like very rarely a lot of times it's just like should we legalize marijuana should mm-hmm. this be legal and it's just it's funny <laughs> i i read the whole thing it's just there you go okay so hey, good brian cave ex machina yeah ex machina is, isn't one of my favorites okay but um if you're maybe more politically minded uh you might like ex machina more than i okay i mean i stuck through it so uh, out of Brian K. Vaughn's, I would say Why the Last Man would be my favorite of those. Okay. So. All right. Um, well, I mean, I guess I couldn't, uh, I couldn't do this episode without talking about the new Mark Wade Archie series. Oh, I forgot to. Well, I guess I didn't bring up Archie because it's, it's YA. It's YA. Yeah. Which is the same reason why we don't have Mouse yeah. and uh, Persopolis yeah. and uh, March on this list because those are we talked about those. We did a YA graphic one. We did when we talked yeah. about Giant Days. Yeah, I know. So I won't. I won't get into it deep. But I just think that they're Nick loves Archie. I do. He loves the I Archie comics Archie, that are happening. But I don't think that like you have to be a longtime yeah. Archie fan to enjoy these. And I don't think yeah. that they're. I think the humor and everything yeah. is. Uh, one of us should have read um, Sabrina because that's no way. There, there's that idea that maybe it. it's not young adult. Yeah. There's, some people are saying the it's too Sabrina creepy. one is. And that's not part of the new Archie yeah. universe, but it's <laughs> definitely spooky. But yeah. anyway, Mark Wade's new Archie series is just. It's hilarious. It feels like <laughs> retro and yeah. yet really modern. It's just it's yeah. very good. So I mean, I that's a good thing. To, that, if but. you don't like, um, if you don't like superheroes, but you still want to read graphic novels, young adult graphic novels are very easy to get into as well. Yeah. So, what do you remember? What episode that was? Uh, forty nine. All right. So, episode forty nine, we talk all about young adult graphic novels, and there's yeah. a lot of good stuff in there. And a lot of times, that's where um, a lot of like history. I yep. feel like is being told too. That's because true. It's, it's War people, dogs, for yeah, example, is a good one. It's people finding ways to retell history in a way that's going to get teens to actually read it. Yep. So that's episode forty nine. Giant uh, days. Giant days yeah. is what it's called. Yep. All right. Well, do you want to? Yeah. Let's see what else we got here. Do you wind um, it up? I love American Vampire. Okay. American Vampire by Scott Snyder. If you're a horror western fan of those either of those genres, it's actually when I say western, really only the first volume is a western. Um, we follow this character called, uh, oh, I can't remember his name. It's Ken? It's Sweets? I can't remember his real name. It's, it's Sweets. Um, he gets bitten by a vampire, but he's the first one to be bitten on American soil. So he's the first American vampire. And he's, a, he's also a different, like, he's the next step in oh. vampires. Like, we have different, uh, evolutionary, uh, steps in the vampire. We sure do. Uh, species. And so he's this new one, and we follow him. He's the most up-to-date vampire. Yeah. We follow him from uh, when he gets bitten in the Old West to okay. it just goes on throughout history. <laughs> so we go to World War II. You know, there's uh, the 1950s Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Um, is is, is that the Revolutionary? I think it might have been. At, I mean, it's after the Revolutionary War. I think it's after the Civil War. Okay. So, But we just follow him out throughout history. I think... The last volume I read, it was in the 70s. Okay. So it's just, it's an interesting tour through history, but also dealing with uh, vampires. <laughs> I, I, A I, natural I, marriage. Yeah, I'd suggest it for people who, uh, you know, like horror, okay. but also those weird tours through history. Yeah. Um, and I can't, I have to talk about Transmetropolitan All right, by Warren on. Ellis, because I just read the first volume as research for this, and it is... So weird. It's about a gonzo <laughs> journalist, okay? 
uh-huh. a gonzo journalist who left the city for five years. He left because this is like a cyberpunk future okay. where everybody has implants, they're gene splicing, they're becoming different species. Uh, television, there's like, you know, this is written in 98. So when I say there's a million channels, like it wasn't that many channels in 98. <laughs> um, people are getting all this stuff directed in the brain. There's like a two-headed cat that smokes cigarettes. Um, a two-headed cat that smokes cigarettes. Yeah, but it's oh, like okay. it's a real like pet cat. This isn't right. like a cartoon cat that's like, hey, can you see those mice today? <laughs> Awfully bold. Um, it's like a strung out Heathcliff. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no. So, but it's just nuts because, and I like I read every piece of dialogue. It's just crazy because he's like he's just far out. He doesn't have any of those implants, right? Mm-hmm. He's not. Uh, he's not. He doesn't want to be part of this. He just wants to go out in the woods again. But he found out he still contracted for two books he has to write for mm-hmm. this company or he'll get sued okay. and everything. So he has to come back in the city and become a journalist. And one, it's kind of funny reading it now because this was back before newspapers were killed by <laughs> the internet. So like uh-huh. when they're like, ah, oh, he's the world famous reporter. It's like, okay, <laughs> sure. The world famous reporter who like goes out there and writes okay. an article and people are alternate, like. Alternate, alternate history. Yeah, it's an alternate sci-fi history yeah. where the internet actually helps the reporter. <laughs> um, and it's just, it's just weird. It deals with these weird sci-fi elements, but this guy is there to call out how crazy everything is. Okay. But also at the same time, call out how crazy the real world is. Um, you know, he's trying to take down the president that is there. And I think in the series, he tries to take down a second one as well. Um, he, you know, combats religion and all this other stuff. Okay. It's just the first volume was just so weird and so crazy. I, I was hooked. So I'm going to keep reading that series. How many volumes is it, did you say? I think it's 10. 10? Yeah. Okay. So uh, we've got The Walking Dead by Robert Kirkman. Oh, boy. That's another show that's on can't AMC. Yeah, you can't do that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh I would no, say sir. I'd say the first half of that series was probably where I was like most hooked, and now I've just been sticking with it because I've been reading it since day one. Mm-hmm. So, but if you like the show, you'd like the comic. It's okay. It's not like one or the other. All right, so um, probably probably not for me. Right, that's true. If you don't like zombies, uh, <laughs> you won't like it. But yeah, and it's also very psychological. Okay. Uh, but everybody's heard about The Walking Dead. It's true. Uh, I should mention Lock and Key. All right. By Joe Hill. That's the son of Stephen son King. Son of Stephen King, It's a yes. weird horror psychological book about a family who... There are two students that come and kill their dad Yikes. because he's a guidance counselor. Uh-huh. And they come and kill him and attack their family. So they, uh, they move okay. and try to hide at his old house. And the house is haunted. It's not a great place. And the house apparently is talking to the boy who killed their dad oh um and it, it they say welcome to uh welcome Night to Vail? lovecraft oh lovecraft. and so like i it doesn't really feel lovecraftian at first okay so i'm wondering if like that's when it start like maybe after it gets a little bit more lovecraftian in its oh, horror okay. but it's just weird it feels sometimes it's gross but it's it's so bizarre I don't like gross yeah you wouldn't maybe you wouldn't like that then that's the thing with graphic novels when like their hor- when they're horror, they can be they yeah. can be grosser than a book because you like horror books sometimes. Yeah, but you can, yeah yeah to see it is a little, yeah. I don't know how I can stomach Invincible by Robert Kirkman. That it's that's I, cartoon violence, but I though. can yeah it is cartoon. Um, all right, what do we? Uh, Yusagi Ojimbo. Okay, it's about a samurai. Yeah, I've read a few volumes of that. Yeah. I think I should say the samurai is a rabbit. Yes, they, yeah, that's important. <laughs> so, I do remember him crossing over with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That in happened once. 1980s but it's, cartoon. Uh, that series has been going on forever since yeah, the 80s. Definitely. Black and white, just a story about a uh, a samurai. Just he's a, he's a ronin, so it's just wandering through. You find out a little about his past, about his son who doesn't know that he's his father. And uh, there's just a lot of like heartfelt vignette stories, sometimes epic sagas. It's just it's one of the best things i've ever read I love are you it. up to date on it uh i no, i'm not up you gotta to date get on back it. in the game yeah uh not everybody has we actually have the first four volumes of that in our series in our YA, ya collection yeah okay. yeah i put it in there sometimes okay. so yeah it could go either way man there's so much more i know i didn't even mention jonah hex and swamp thing no you didn't so all right do you want to mention them yeah jonah hex if you like westerns yeah. that one's a real western okay and i if you're thinking of the movie which was terrible with... Uh, you haven't it, even seen it. Was it Josh Brolin? Yeah, it was. So it wasn't terrible. It was pretty bad. Okay. Um, but the I comic, can say that because I've seen it. The comic series, when it's written by uh, Jimmy P- 
Palmiotti. Okay. Did I say that right. When he's writing it, it's like a gritty Western. Jonah Hex. Yeah. Wow. Like, isn't that, isn't it, isn't it called All Star Western in New Fifty Two? In the New Fifty Two. Yeah. Yeah. I think that might have had a little bit more to do with like superhero stuff. Oh, okay. But like this one. It's just like straight Western. It's just the story of this. I mean, he's got a scarred face. Yeah. He's this ugly bounty hunter just going around. Just like sometimes the story lasts multiple issues. Sometimes it's just the one, uh, you know, 22-page story. Okay. Uh, but they're all just so good. Um, if, you're, if you're into like grittier Western, it's kind of like the um, Unforgiven vibe. Okay. Less so than like, I don't know, less so than the spaghetti Westerns of like... Uh, the man uh, oh yeah Sergio Leone the, yeah less like uh, the good bad and the ugly yeah. more like Unforgiven okay um, just you know grittier stories and then Swamp Thing that's probably a cheat yeah but he hangs out with Batman and stuff he did he Batman, did hang Superman. out he did do a Batman Black story. Orchid yeah. in Neil Gaiman's book it's just it's <laughs> just only like one issue does he ever like yeah. deal with superheroes it's just so good it's, it's both horror he's a main character in the new animated cartoon Darn just, it. justice league action Darn it. so i thought i could get away with swamp thing maybe, no it's horror it's uh no, no. it's darn it <laughs> but eric loves swamp it's magic thing, so yeah it's it's, it's magic more, more mad darn it yep. swamp thing every little thing he does is magic okay all right conan well, the barbarian we have the four first four volumes in our collection too yeah. that's great i'm gonna have to pull you out of here with a shepherd's crook yeah otherwise you just yeah. keep talking about sorry no it's all right uh is that so is that it I mean, there's there's still more on my list, but there's so many down. more that I haven't read too. That's the yeah. That's the thing. Uh, I well, to, I think that's a good. I think that's a good reminder that yeah. like graphic novels are more than just like the latest issue of Spider Man. There's yes. there's a whole sub genre within mm-hmm. the graphic novel medium yeah. of you know so, yeah, real no. realistic great storytelling. Yeah. So it's out there, and we can help you yeah. find it. So uh, Vertigo. That would be the uh, the what what do you call that? The company. Because uh-huh. Vertigo is an imprint of DC. Right. So if you see a comic book or a graphic novel with the Vertigo headline, that means it's not a superhero book, most likely. Okay. Uh, Vertigo is good if you're looking for that stuff. Image. And uh, oh, what's the other one? IDW? Mm-hmm. I think that's it. Dark Horse. Well, they're all good. A lot of different ones. Yeah. Right. So I, we have a lot of, uh, I think we have a few Image comics. I can't remember what yeah. Invisible Republic is. I think that I might think that's be its own thing. I don't think it is. I think oh, it's okay. like in a smaller imprint. Okay. But. So anyway, for, for all these we mentioned and many more, mm-hmm. uh, quite a few are in our collection. And as always, we can get them through yeah. other STLS libraries or even beyond. So yeah. if there's things you want to read, let us know and we will hook you, you know up. You know what I realized while well, looking but. at this, though? Uh, these are all, um, I'm pretty sure, I don't think Invisible Republic is written by a woman. These are all uh, men mm. writing this. I think what happens is a lot of the uh, the women writers who are doing graphic novels i think they end up go- ending in the young adult section. yeah that's true and i don't know if that's purposeful i don't know if they're intending that all the time or mm-hmm. if it's just maybe the weird way like a weird sexist thing that's yeah there I, it could be i mean it wouldn't surprise me but it makes sense i mean yeah. women comic book authors and artists yeah. i think used to be incredibly rare now it's a little bit more common people like right. gail simone and others uh breaking yeah. through that well but i mean i think it's still with the young adult one, I maybe it's just I mean, you got young adult, so and you got a much more I think female heavy audience yeah. reading young adult, so when it comes it's just yeah. It's yeah, just but weird. I mean if it's a sexist thing, it makes mm-hmm. sense that yeah, let the women write the stuff for kids, you know. Yeah. So it's weird. I, I think definitely the industry is still male driven. Yeah. Uh and I will and say though harder harder for even incredibly talented women to break through. I'll say, like looking at this and then thinking about all the ones we have in the young adult, then I would say the ones that I read by women are the ones that end up making me laugh mm. more, mm-hmm. like Giant Days mm-hmm. or Lucky Penny or and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I really enjoy Gail Simone's stuff. She does she does both superhero and non, uh, mostly adult, yeah. but she's got a lot of good stuff in there. So yeah, check her out definitely. Birds of Prey, a big title for her. Anyway, I think we've wrapped this up a couple yeah. of times, so I guess we'll just stop talking about I it. Guess now. We could have said Persopolis. Oh, yeah, no, that's well, that's YA. We're yeah. not doing Darn it. YA. Anyway, we got to talk library news. Okay. Uh, this is February break week, so we got a few fun things going on. We have our regular story times, uh, which are Thursday at one o'clock this week, Friday at ten thirty. Uh, we got the Teen Anime Club Wednesday night, as always, five thirty to seven thirty. We got a couple of movies showing. We're showing um, Balto Two Wolf Quest Thursday morning at uh, ten thirty. 
Friday afternoon at 3.30, we are showing Lego Scooby-Doo Haunted Halloween. Brand new movie just came out, so we're excited <laughs> yeah. to show that. So anyway, a lot of good stuff going on. Book clubs currently reading The Nest by Cynthia Diaprick Sweeney. Ooh. And The Pelican Brief by John Grisham, which was moved to March 8th. Sure was. So hope you'll <laughs> join us for any and all of those. Anything else? Uh, we just have our Teen Anime Club. Yeah. 5.30 to 7.30 on Wednesdays. Oh, and you were doing, you're doing a special Minecraft. Uh, Minecraft. 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 <laughs> This you week. don't want to deal with Minecraft. No, Those, you don't. You're, you're down they're there really, in the mines. They really burrow. You're looking for gold. All of a yeah. sudden, you turn your lantern. Was that a, was that a scuttling sound? No. No. Nope. Minecraft. They're 12 Thursdays. feet tall. That's Thursday? Is that right? Thursday uh, at 1 o'clock? Thursday yeah, one Thursday at 1 o'clock. Just one this three. Thursday. Yeah, just Normally this Thursday. Mondays. But. Also, we're starting uh, to advertise for our teen photo show. That's right. So if you're a teen looking to get your photos shown at a show for teens, yep. now's, the, now's the time to get your work together it sure is eric all right well i think that's it for us this week next week we're going to travel back in time for all the books through the ages and we're going to touch the 80s that's right wow next week is our 80th episode that's right and then after that we're going to talk lemony snicket so, that's true yeah. and then after that we don't know yeah the we, sky's the limit we had planned Lonely Hearts like book the, club we got to get back to Lonely Hearts book we had club planned like the past six episodes yep if you count the next two. And so, like, yeah, I, it's weird. Like, now I'm scared. Like, no, what do yeah. we do? The show's <laughs> going to fall apart. I know. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Bye.